the, um, when I started looking at um, putting the financial articles together, the first thing I wanted to see was how much additional funding we would have in our um, local revenue, uh, state aid, uh, new growth, um, because I wanted to raise and appropriate more funding within the town budgets, um, including the schools. And uh, my overall goal was to try and put as much of the free cash that we have certified this year back into the stabilization fund because we used a higher than normal amount this past year in May. Um, with that goal in mind, uh, some of the areas of the policy of board of selection uh, brought forward from a fiscal standpoint um, would um, not be fully achieved. I'll go through that in a second, but the, the overall goal when I was doing this was to try to build the FY16 budgets with some of these one-time capital items for the town side, address some of the needs of the school department, um, but then the overriding goal of let's try to build that stabilization fund. So uh, in doing that, uh, the policy uh, starts with you know, you know, certified free cash. Um, the total number this year was 3,024,657. According to the board's policy, $600,000 at a minimum to be set aside for snow and ice deficit, which we did. Uh, at least $350,000 would be uh, transferred uh, from other post employment benefits trust fund, which there's an article that does that. So we achieved those two uh, items. Uh, there was uh, part of the policy is that uh, the hope is that at least 25% of the remaining certified free cash after you deduct for the OPEP and the Snow and ice um, would be used for capital capital items and one-time expenditures. We didn't quite achieve the 25%, we got 21%. And that's because the goal was to get more money into the stabilization mm -hmm. fund. And, and, then, and actually, if you really look at it, you say to well, if they didn't need to spend the money, they didn't need to spend the money. We saved the money. Mm -hmm. So and then the goal of at least 25% of the remaining amount of free cash being transferred to the stabilization fund, we're putting approximately 79% of the remaining amount of free cash into the stabilization fund. Uh, the amount we're putting in is $1,637,157. And this past uh, town meeting, we spent a little over one cent. So we didn't get the full amount back, but we came close. So I think yeah. um, we, from my standpoint, uh, we uh, achieved uh, the overreaching goal, which was to build back the stabilization. And you put the priority in that category? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I know from um, our experience at, I think it was the most recent annual town meeting, there was some discussion where the uh, publishing of those policies in relation to the then warrant. Um, had benefit in the debate mm -hmm. and discussion. So is it your intention to um, produce such a document again for this special town meeting? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. We have Thank actually you. the handout. I, I was putting the, final, putting the final touches on tonight. I need to review it again tomorrow. What we did last year at the special town meeting, we put the policy bullets at the top and, and said that they, you know, we achieved it. If we felt short, you know, we identified why and how. I'll do the same thing this year. Excellent. And the annual town meeting will put the entire policy, but I think for this town meeting, yeah. uh, maybe the bullets, whether we achieve that goal or not, yes. is probably more key. Yeah. I think that's what we, we can decide that anytime. It's either way it works. And I think but the, the um, Yep. I think the key element is that um, those who participate as questions come up, they have a reference point to look yeah. at why and then the rationale behind mm -hmm. what's being proposed and why. So I think for the board, we'd appreciate your continued practice, and I think it was self-evident at the last town meeting that it plays a, plays a role and has value. So, very good. Okay. Do you have any further comments you want to offer in general? No, I mean, we'll go through the warrant, but I think, um, you know, the end of the fiscal year 15, um, obviously we, we um, ended strong. Um, a little over $3 million in free cash is essentially the surplus that the town had from a combination of um, budgets that were turned back and revenue that was higher than projected. Um, 
I always look at free cash on a year to year basis and the previous year uh, we had um, about four point six million dollars in free cash so it fluctuates year to year, it can be higher than that in any given year. It just depends on um, how the revenue comes in. So we're happy with the amount of free cash that came in, we're happy we can set aside funds for around the other post employment benefits. <coughs> setting aside money for um, snow and ice is um, essential as we saw this past winter. Um, but I think at the end of the fiscal year, we were able to generate a surplus, address address even a higher snow and ice deficit than the winter we had, um, address capital items, build money into budgets that will help us in the future. Um, so overall, when I, when I looked at the budget in the areas with funding, again, we'll go over the more specifics, um, I, was, I was pleased yeah. And I, I can recall in the not too distant past when we had a major um, snow season, not even close to what we had experienced this past winter, but the, um, the impact on the subsequent year budget was pretty significant. So you've done a good job of, with these steps to level out that expense. And I guess you could make an argument that we just went through you'd have to think is probably one of the worst that we're ever going to experience, not going to win. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Farm, farmer's so almond accident could know. be worse this, this so, winter. <laughs> so I, hopefully it's not even close, but, but that certainly has an impact on our budgeting as well. So, all right, so let's turn to the articles. We'll move through them. Um, Selectman Wentworth and I were in attendance um, last week when the Finance Committee held its public hearing and took votes on recommendations for each of the articles. That's um, usually not the case. Often we meet before they do. Um, so for the benefit of my colleagues um, who weren't present, um, after the town manager speaks to the article and uh, we have any questions addressed, I will do my best to make note of what the Finance Committee did for your benefit as well um, on each article. So with that, let me turn to Article 1, which is um, an article that um, raises and appropriates additional funds to fiscal 2016 budgets. And um, they are, um, as the town manager just alluded, funds that have been made available at the year end uh, due to um, adjustments and higher than projected uh, revenue sources, if I have my facts correct. Yeah, in this particular category, you know, we have raised an appropriate additional $1,137,871 to the FY16 budget. And at the end of the fiscal year, when we looked at uh, the amount of revenue collected compared to projection, we felt that we could increase uh, the amount of money we would raise appropriate to the budget. So, uh, Going through what's listed here, uh, the school budget uh, will increase uh, $681,706 uh, in a variety of areas. Uh, just in general, uh, uh, overview $18,607 for salaries to fund part time aid uh, in the school department. Uh, the operating budget will increase $102,532. Uh, those funds will be paid for $30,000 of legal services, uh, main, maintenance contracts and services will increase 30, approximately $37,000, and summer services $35,000. And then finally, health insurances uh, in the school department will increase $360,567, and that's because uh, this year we'll be funding health insurance for employees who are normally funded out of the cafeteria fund and out of the grant program. Uh, instead of funding those employees' health insurance through those programs, they'll now be in the general fund. If we continue to fund them out of the cafeteria fund and the grant program, those programs will not be self-sustaining. So it makes sense to pull them out and put them in the general fund where actually they should be, and it's better for us to track. So on the town, so, so the school budget for FY16 will increase $681,706. On the town side, there are, seven, there are many budgets that will increase, totaling $456,165. And just briefly, if I could, Mr. Chairman, just to go through them mm -hmm. individually. On the Council on Aging, uh, the operating budget will increase $31,000. Uh, the areas that the $31,000 will fund 
will be the repair of the electronic wall, the large meeting room that you see that divides divides the uh, large, large uh, room in that building. Uh, that needs to be repaired at a cost of $21,000. The uh, older section of the building needs uh, seven new windows for $4,800. Uh, the walk-in refrigerator um, needs to be repaired for $2,000. And uh, the purchase of a new snow wall for $2,000. And then any remaining funds uh, we'll just address any mis um, miscellaneous building repairs for uh, council on the senior side. Under police capital outlay, we're seeking to raise $28,735 uh, to fund uh, a variety of uh, two items actually uh, within the capital outlay budget. Uh, $21,823 will be used to purchase a new firearm system software called. Um, Laser shot, I believe. Laser, laser, laser shot. Laser shot. Yeah. Just for yeah. blank. Yeah. Uh, the reason why we're looking to fund uh, that software is because it's uh, the same software that the department has used for the past four years in the Middlesex Sheriff's Mobile Training Center. But that center is not as available as often uh, as we need it to be. Uh, and because it's becoming so limited, we're not able to train uh, annually as we'd like to. So the new software, once we purchase it, we'll be able to train more often. Uh, and uh, more efficiently um, within the uh, police department's uh, uh, building. The software will be housed in the basement of the building. Uh, it's a scenario-based training that incorporates de-escalation techniques, uh, less lethal encounters, as well as deadly force encounters. Uh, the officers will be using the same type of weapons that they currently use to um, be computerized. So the chief is very excited about the purchase of the software to enhance training. Finally, uh, an additional $6,912 within this amount will pay for the fourth cruiser that the department has yet to buy. This year, the cost of cruises was higher than projected, so we weren't able to buy all four at the time we normally do. So the chief bought three, held off on the fourth until we get additional funding. The next item is on the fire salaries, $118,117. This has a couple of areas that it's funding. We have three employees who informed us that they intend to retire at the beginning of this fiscal year. In the end, they decided to stay, so we needed to actually fund their salaries for the full year instead of the partial year that we, that we originally had funded. Also within this $118,000, there are adjustments that need to be made to the budget because there are employees who had benefits coming to them that we did not properly uh, include in the budget. And um, essentially, there was uh, an oversight of one employee's salary was not in the budget, so we needed to, to add that back in. Under fire operating, $31,000 will be used to fund two items. $24,000 will, uh, will be used to purchase a new Fire, two, fire Channel 2 repeater and receiver at Ames Hill. Uh, this will replace the current obsolete piece of equipment that the department has that they can't even find parts for. And then $7,000 will be used to repair the salt station uh, roof uh, to stop water and ice dams that have been problematic. Under computer services, we're looking for $10,000 uh, to replace computers that uh, are currently on Windows XP. We have a handful of computers that need to be swapped out, and this $10,000 will do that. Uh, community and uh, economic development operating uh, is seeking $75,000. Uh, that will be used to hire a consultant to update the zoning bylaws and then another consultant to update this town's open space and recreation plan. As we heard from a housing summit and as we've talked to the consultant who's doing the master plan of the zoning bylaws and being updated, um, which is uh, normal for cities and towns to do. And our town's open space and recreation plan is due to expire in the next couple of months, so we need to get that updated or we'll be able to file or apply for any grants. Um, and the DPW administration uh, is seeking $10,313 to uh, allow a part-time clerical position to go full-time and to use some of that funding to pay a portion of the vacation buyback of a retired employee. DPW administration is also looking for $10,000 in capital outlay uh, to fund some renovations uh, to the department once the community development office moves up to the town hall. The $10,000 will be used uh, for items such as um, uh, new walls and painting down the department. And then finally, $132,000 for fleet maintenance capital outlay. Uh, the 
funds will be used to purchase two vehicles within the, within the DPW. $65,000 will be used uh, to purchase a new truck for fleet maintenance. And then $67,000 will be used to purchase a new bobcat for the highway department, which will include attachments such as a broom and a uh, coal uh, a road planer of the road, which will allow us to patch our roads better. So those are all the items in our Okay, are there questions about any of the items that the town manager delineated? All right, and I'll note that um, the finance committee um, had some questions about the um, vehicles in particular, and I think, uh, Mr. Montori, you shared with us a memorandum that you did relative to the laser shot for the police department. So there's been some uh, review of that particular program. Yes. Um, at the end of the day, the finance committee voted to adopt a uh, recommend adoption of Article 1. Yes. Um, and these are the, they asked for some specifications on the DPW vehicles, which I have here. Mm -hmm. Quite lengthy, quite technical. Mm -hmm. I sent them off to them. Um, there's one vehicle we're still waiting for some the specifications on, but I'll try to summarize the specifications on the, the general terms for the handout time. Sure. But I'm going into the detail of the size engine, yep. the hydraulics, things like that. Just so, one yeah, and obviously that information is important. We'd like to think that um, if the finance committee has reviewed it and offered an opinion, that that will carry some weight as well. So, all right. So as I mentioned, uh, there was a recommendation to adopt by the FinCon. Um, I would ask for any motions members of the board of selectmen wish to make. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a uh, motion for recommend adoption of Article One. I'll second. We have a motion made by Mr. Gay, seconded by Mr. Wentworth. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the chair votes aye as well. <coughs> Are anybody, is anyone opposed? I don't hear any, that would be unanimous. So Article 2 is an article that would appropriate funds for a new labor agreement with the International Association of Firefighters, AFL-CIO, Tewksbury Firefighters Local 1647, um, and use those funds in fiscal year 2016. So, Mr. Montori, do you want to speak to that? Um, the, as the board knows, we come to an agreement with the firefighters union on the new contract that calls for a 2.5% raise for uh, three years dating back to July 1st of 2015, that is consistent with all of the other unions and personnel bylaw employees in town. Also within the new contract that we now come to agreement is an increase of $100 per step for uh, longevity for individuals in the fire department. Uh, beginning next fiscal year, the clothing allowance we added to the base pay instead of giving a separate check to the department. Um, and those are the essentials of the consistent what we've done with um, other unions um, and the first year cost is projected to be $117,000. Any questions from colleagues? Then I ask for any motions. <coughs> we'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 2. I'll second that. <coughs> so we have a motion made by Mr. Wentworth, seconded by Mr. Crabman. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. That would make that vote unanimous. And I neglected to mention that the Finance Committee also voted to recommend adoption for new meeting. Article 3. According to um, Mass General Law, the late bills presented to the town must be approved by town meeting prior to payment. And this particular article would authorize the listed charges to be paid. Mr. Montori? The $30,214.54 for uh, several areas. Um, the schools received a um, late invoice from Merrimack Education Collaborative. I know that's something they've been working on for quite some time to try to understand and get their billing up to date. Um, so that uh, bill didn't, didn't really surprise us because they've been working on it for quite some time. That total is $28,590. Ingram Library Services sent their bill in late this, at the end of this fiscal year for $921. The National Grid uh, sent a couple of bills in late that totaled $370. And then Wheeling Office supplied the same thing. The bill came in late for $332. So 
all the bills came in after July 1, uh, after the period was supposed to be closed. It's, it's not uh, that uncommon, and I think we'll probably see some of the late bills coming in mm -hmm. next, uh, next time town meeting. Sure. My understanding is that that Merrimack Education Collaborative, Collaborative is from a few years, not just one. That's that's it is. coming back from many years. It's good. I think it's just te technology issues. Okay. Any questions to the town manager? If not, I'll note the finance committee vote to recommend adoption of Article Three, and I'd ask if there are any motions by my colleagues. I'm going to make, make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 3. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Chair will vote in the affirmative. That will be unanimous. Article 4 uh, states that the article would allow the town to utilize <coughs> funds from both water and sewer retained earnings that were considered available as of July 1, 2015 to purchase a utility truck with a crane and box for use by the water and sewer divisions for pump station maintenance. Mm -hmm. And the vehicle cost is anticipated to be $130,000. Um, I know and I'm assuming you have requested or are working on specifications for that particular vehicle yeah, at the request of the finance <laughs> committee. Right um, so you're proposing in this article to uh, take, uh, it looks like 65000 from the water fund retained earnings and 65000 from the sewer fund mm -hmm. retained earnings? Yes. Um, at the end of the fiscal year, uh, water retained earnings, which is essentially water free cash, was $3,419,000. Six hundred fifteen dollars in the sewer. It was six million one hundred seventy uh, thousand two hundred eighty-two dollars. Um, we are seeking to take sixty-five thousand dollars out of each uh, of the retained earnings to pay for this vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, just a note on both of those amounts for retained earnings. Uh, retained earnings only like free cash is cumulative each year. So of the uh, water, three point four million dollars. Uh, 1.5 of it was for previous fiscal years, and of the 6.1 uh, million for sewer retained earnings, uh, 4.5 was for previous fiscal years. It's cumulative if it's not spent. But we have in our five-year plan um, um, projects that we will use uh, retained earnings for. Um, we can easily spend under water retained earnings on upgrades to our water distribution system, uh, water to pop to water. The town engineer is finishing the water model. Uh, as we speak, we determine what, what work needs to be done. This is going to be a drop in the bucket compared to what's needed for our water system. And then on the sewer side, uh, the 47 pump stations in our system that um, any of them or one will go it could be very costly. But we have a lot of <coughs> inflow and infiltration we need to address over the next five years, uh, as you see in the capital budget. And then from talking to the, super, the director of public works today, uh, one of the projects will be undertaken over the next uh, year or two is the upgrade of the force fan on the end of the road. Um, that um, right now is at capacity and causing problems. So, um, there are, there's a fair amount of money in both these accounts, but work is needed and will be done. In your article, this article for the proposed 130000 Just to you just um, stress out for one vehicle at this point in time? Yes. Okay. Are there further questions? If not, I'll note the Finance Committee recommended adoption of this article as written. Any motions from colleagues? I'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 4. Second. Okay, I have a motion made by Mr. Wentworth, seconded by Mr. Panelitis. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes in the affirmative as well, and I will make that vote unanimous. We'll move to Article 5. Um, this article uh, serves to transfer funds from certified free cash for the demolition of the former police station, including hazardous material removal and all related site work. Uh, in addition to these funds, a prior warrant article appropriated $50,000 for this work, but based upon projected costs, it was not sufficient, and this additional funding, um, as proposed, is needed. 
the article also funds the purchase of a new backhoe with attachments and accessories for the Department of Public Works Highway Division. So Mr. Montreux, you want to speak to those two items? Briefly, thank you. Um, on the former police station, uh, I had hoped to be um, reporting tonight that we opened bids and we had a price of the demolition, but we had to delay the bids for a couple of weeks because we had some issues that we wanted to work out in regards to the Riverfront Protection Act, which we think we did today. Mm -hmm. uh, the bids are going to be open on, the, on October 15th. Um, we need to make some adjustments to the bid specification. Uh, but the hundred thousand dollars is supplementing a previous appropriation of fifty thousand dollars to uh, demolish the Paul police station. The reason for the increase in the amount uh, is because after we did the hazardous materials survey in the building, um, the consultant informed us that just to remove the, in his projection, just to remove the hazardous materials was eighty-five thousand dollars. So um, that number could be lower once they get in there and actually do the work, but based on the initial testing projection was eighty-five. That, um, that was all the budget that we had. So the architect who drew the specifications of felt that 100,000 plus the 50 we have should be sufficient to, to take down the building if there's anything extra we'll return it back. <coughs> On the, um, the new vehicle for the DPW highway, the new backhoe, this replaces a 1998 Ford Macro in the uh, It was one of the top priorities in the capital equipment budget uh, for FY16, but we weren't able to fund it. <coughs> so this was previously reviewed mm -hmm. by you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Other questions? Just one quick question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gay. Is there a projected time frame for the demolition of the police station? If we um, well, if we open bids uh, on the 15th, as we anticipate, mm -hmm. um, we'll get some of them required to get the time before we pull them Good. Excellent. Thank you. And, and just as a side note, um, we advertised again for the sale of the police station lot today. In two separate bids two or separate. proposals. Yeah. Very good. Um, one question that I had, and I, I may have misunderstood or misread something, wouldn't be the first time, but um, in some of the materials you provided us relative to the police station, the former police station, when the building is demolished, does that, does that the site of the building? Is it required to be paved? Did I read that correctly? That's what we were, yeah, you did read that correctly. That's one of the things we were working on. Because of the Riverfront Protection Act and the setbacks, you know, we need to keep all the paving in place because once you tear that up and make it into grass and a nice area, then you can't go back in and disturb it for the purpose. So the, the intent is to is to pave for well, as a temporary the, measure? The, the intent when I talked to the board last time was we would most likely pave over the way the building is. Today, after further discussion with DEP, they said you're better off not to pave over that area, but just keep the paving in place. Okay, and does that mean that if another building were to be put there, the paving that exists has to remain? No, if we pulled up with that, because I'm sure we're paving, new paving, Yeah. but um, at least there's paving there, so the from a stormwater standpoint and a runoff into the river and pervious material, okay. you didn't, it's, it's still the same amount. So you, so the, the issue of paving, it has to do with while the building, while the parcel is undeveloped. Right. When it becomes developed, if, we, if, if all the damage is gone and you had to go back in and put new pavement, yeah. the restriction would almost make it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I know that just around the chairman of the FinCom had a question about this article because one of the the, the pieces in this article is a project mm -hmm. and the other one is is basically a capital. Sure. In the future we can split those. Okay. Each year when I do the warrant, you know, there were years I've split.